Okay, so we have um, Shai Shafenek, who is a senior product manager at Fiverr. Uh, we have Guy Badichi, who is a VP customer journey at Fiverr, and he'll explain more what it's all about. Badichi. Badichi, okay. <laughs> and we have Dudu Karni, who is a member of the board in the Shudaf Cooperative in Jerusalem. And uh, hopefully we'll join by Valerie uh, Bakia from the Jerusalem Institute in, um, for Visual Studies uh, shortly. Um, so first of all, I think we should do some sort of introduction, self-introduction, and just tell us a little bit about yourself and what is your connection generally to the sharing economy before we delve into the big questions about trust in P2P platforms. So, Hi. Um, my connection to the sharing economy actually started um, many years ago. Uh, I had a startup a, a few years ago, which was the first taxi app uh, startup. It's, it was called Way Better. Um, and then the taxi came out and uh, killed us. Um, and actually our vision and, and, and something that we started working on and, and actually ran a quite successful pilot was that was a model of real-time sharing on taxis, uh, which was very awesome. Um, again, but there was a taxi, and the taxi industry was in panic, and we just couldn't get them to listen. Um, and so, it was, and, and it was very, very hard with uh, with investors not believing in the sharing economy that time enough, and not believing enough in startups. Uh, in the domain of transportation. They were like, taxis, like what the fuck are you talking about? Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, and, then, um, and then I came to Fiverr, and that's it. The rest is history. And the rest is history. Hi everyone, my name is Guy. As Gil mentioned, I'm VP Customer Journey for Fiverr. Um, coming from customers, product, Program worlds for the past 20 years. Uh, before uh, joining Fiverr, which was like less than a year ago, believe it or not, uh, I've been working with eBay for the past four years before Fiverr. Um, I guess that some of you ask yourselves, uh, what the hell is customer journey? So what we did here when we built this domain is actually gathered all the relevant teams who work closely with the community day in day out. Teams like customer support like account management, working with the premium segments, like uh, fraud, no need to explain that, and other teams working with the content uh, coming into the platform. These guys work, like I said, day in, day out with the community and actually exposed to the notion of trust, to the impact of trust, to the way the community perceive trust, and uh, on top of that, they are dealing and, and responsible to of, like, improving trust within the platform. This is my connection to, to this world. Hello, first I'm sorry, but I'm going to speak in Hebrew. In my world, in the social businesses, we usually speak Hebrew. As uh, Shalom, call me Dudu. And if you want to talk about the issue of Hebrew, you can talk about it in Hebrew. As uh, I'm talking uh, about the issue of 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 אני חבר לבד דלת קואפרטיב השתתפותי בירושלים, קוראים לו בשותף. אנחנו מנהלים ביחד חנות סופר, 300 איש כרגע, וגדלים בצורה השתתפותית. משתתפים ביחד בקבלת החלטות, זו כלכלה שיתופית פחות טכנולוגית, אבל אנחנו מתעסקים המון בנושא האמון. בצורה של 300 איש, כולם בהתנדבות שלנו, עובד אחד ועובד אצלנו, אנחנו לא עובדים אצלו. ואנחנו מנהלים ביחד בצורה של קבלת החלטות וניהול שוטף של חנות, כל הפעלה ביחד בצורה שבני המון מאוד על אמון והשתתפות של כל החברים. It's important to say, I'm going to ask some questions, but the aim is to have an open debate. So if any of you have a question, and I know many of you are very related to this topic, so feel free, just raise your hand and we'll pass you the microphone. Uh, and it's going to be pretty soon, so prepare yourself. Um, I think for a start, maybe uh, just give us the basics of trust in P2P platform from your angle. Okay, so which one of you? Thank you. 
Um, so the basic of trust. Um, I think the, ba the basic of, or maybe the, I mean, the first outcome of trust is having a happy community, um, a community where, where people feel safe to, to be engaged in. Um, and in Fiverr, it's both sellers and buyers um, need to feel that they have trust. And trust is something that is not only um, between them, it's also between us and them. They have to trust us, and we need to trust them. Um, so that's a very, uh, I think the basic of trust is not, is not technology, um, is not product, it's something that's much deeper, um, and it's a feel, okay? Um, and what we try and do with the product, um, um, and we put a lot of efforts into, is helping people to get this feeling. Um, and, and I'm guessing that we're going to go into details uh, later. I want to attack it in, uh, from, from kind of a different angle. Ask yourself, who are the people that you trust? People that you trust are people that you know. People that you have like mutual history with. Or other people that uh, you have uh, references or credentials from other people that you know or system that you trust or trustworthy in your eyes. Now, to me, uh, trust between peers in online is in some way not the right term. Because you can't trust someone if you don't know him. And uh, trust is all about being derived from building relationship. You don't build relationship in a, in a second, in a day. It takes a long time to build relationship and trust and it takes just a second to ruin it. So what we're trying to do here is actually create an environment in which people, users, our users, will feel comfortable to take, I, I, I uh, define it as uh, um, calculated risks, uh, and, and will feel more comfortable with, with that. Uh, I, I, I'm not using the term trust, even though some of my teams or subdomains are called trust within uh, the department. Uh, and what we're trying to do from my perspective is translate the offline experience to the online experience, meaning uh, create a, a situation in which the user are exposed. You see a lot of details, a lot of tr transparency, you feel better, you know the people. This is one component. The second is uh, our ability to monitor and uh, in a way be the gatekeeping, gatekeepers, um, prevent bad content or bad users to live within the platform. And the third one, which is uh, important as well, is our ability to uh, protect our users. In case they encounter the, like a pro problematic situation, they have us as the safety net. And this is trust to me. Maybe, maybe, maybe you will explain more about what is Fiverr. So maybe not everyone knows what is Fiverr. I let the product manager do that. <laughs> Thank you. Who doesn't know what Fiverr is? Okay, next question. <laughs> Who's using Fiverr these days? Nice. אחת הגדרות שאני יותר אוהב לאמון זה היכולת שלך להפקיד את הפגיעות שלך, להיות פגיע, זה למעשה סיכון. אתה לוקח בידי מישהו אחר, ושאתה מאמין שזה בסדר, שהוא יעמוד בציפיות שלך. ויש כמה שיטות, חלק פה הוזכרו לבנות אמון. אחת מהן זה להכיר את הבן אדם, זה לא תמיד אפשרי. השנייה זה, זה לסמוך עליו כי הוא שייך לאיזה מוסד. כלומר, אנחנו סומכים על רופא, למרות שאנחנו לא יודעים מי הוא, כי הוא רופא. זה אומר שיש לו איזושהי הסמכה, משהו בתוך התואר שלו גורם לנו לסמוך עליו. יש עוד אפשרות של הרתעה. אנחנו מפחדים, אנחנו יודעים שהבן אדם הזה אם הוא יפשל הוא יענש או חברתית או חוקי, מעיף אותו מהפלטפורמה או שהוא יקבל ריוויים ממש גרועים, אנחנו סומכים על זה, והדבר השלישי זה שאנחנו בקופרטיב אצלנו יותר מתעסקים איתו והוא יותר יעיל עבורנו זה להיות הרגשה של חלק מהקהילה, זה איזושהי הזדהות קבוצתית, גוף אידנטיפיקיישן אתה מאמין שאם אתה, אתה חלק מקהילה, אתה מרגיש שהמטרות, 
והחוויות שלך ושל אחרים דומות ואתה מאמין באותם דברים ואתה מרגיש שאם אני ואחרים אנחנו באותו, אנחנו באותה פגיעה, אותה קבוצה אז כנראה אנחנו נעשה אותם דברים, אנחנו נאמין, אנחנו אם אין לנו דילמה אנחנו נבחר באותו כיוון וגורם לי להרגיש שאני, שאני סומך על אנשים ושהם יהיו אמינים כלפיי זה השיטות אתה חלק ממשהו, זה כמו Very good analysis. Um, when we talk about uh, high value, take a seat. <laughs> um, when we talk about uh, in platforms, normally we use a profile of the person. So, what are uh, the characteristics? What are those? Uh, Features of a person that make makes him trustworthy and what makes him not trustworthy. What are those other things? I think it's very connected to what Dudu said. Maybe you can elaborate more how it is being implemented in uh, in Finder. So yeah. Uh, so it happens on, uh, actually on many many levels. There are the first of all there is a. Uh, um, a level of trust that's that maybe the obvious one when we talk about sellers, which is the, the review system and the rating system, um, the reputation system, you can call it however you want, um, which is basically what's, what buyers are, are saying about sellers. And this is extremely effective, um, sometimes even too effective, um, because it gives tremendous power uh, to buyers over sellers. Um, so this means, this, this, is, this is very powerful. Um, and this has to meet uh, also other uh, parameters, which are more, which are maybe hidden, more hidden parameters, um, which take what we think is good behavior and, and bad behavior and, and monitor on that and measure that. So, uh, things like uh, responsiveness, things like um, uh, what's the history of this person, did he ever violate any term, uh, things like, uh, um, okay, maybe he had like a lot of cancelled orders, maybe he had a lot of uh, orders that were late, maybe he had, so we have a lot, a lot of parameters which we think are crucial uh, in, the in the experience of the virus, uh, and we take these into consideration when we're, it's not only the rating, it's also the inner ranking that we give to the person. Um, other than this, we have also other, other ways to verify um, uh, who the person is, is this person reliable, is this person coming, uh, um, I mean, is this, uh, does this person have connected to another and I think we're going to talk about it to another service like Facebook so we can get some of the insights from there. Um, so we're doing a lot of things to try and understand who the person is when he comes in, but also to monitor and to profile him and to understand how trustworthy is this person um, um, along the way. I think to, um, to shy uh, uh, comments, um, I'm not a big fan of reviews. Wanted to say that, wanted to say it now at the beginning. Um, I'm a bigger fan of behaviors. I think that reviews can be played, and we see it all over the place. Uh, and not just the fact that it can be played by the users, the fact that uh, the reviews is kind of some kind of a rating, some kind of a, some kind of a holy grail, um, leads the, this person, this user, to behave in a way that is even worse if we didn't have it. And this is what we need to uh, fix on any platform. I think that as many behaviors that we'll have exposed uh, to, the, to the other side will be better. And uh, maybe some of the other components can be done behind the scenes to avoid this uh, gamification of, of a profile that is being done by users day in, day out. So um, I think it's an opportunity now uh, to Valerie to self-introduce herself um, and also explain a little bit about your connection to the sharing economy through the Uber Labs that you do in the Institute. Okay, good evening everyone. Um, I'm Valerie 
everybody. I apologize for being late, but I've just been speaking at an event on sustainable consumption elsewhere. Uh, and of course, they mentioned the sharing economy. So it's great to be here, and uh, it's great to see so many people uh, gathered together. Wish every luck to Gil and we share for, for doing this. Um, so my name is Valerie Graffia. Um, I uh, work in the, on research in the Jerusalem Institute for Israel Studies. Um, I perhaps should ask who, add who I am. I'm also the former Deputy Director General of the Ministry of Environment in Israel. But that was a while ago. Um, so uh, in the work we do in the Jerusalem Institute, we come to the issue of the sharing economy from sustainability. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for sustainability. And we got to the sharing economy because we saw that it offered an opportunity for a different style of life. And we're looking for sustainable lifestyles, for sustainable consumption. So. Uh, what you asked me was uh, how trust related to our uh, work. So uh, we're working on uh, seeking lifestyle, which is a sustainable lifestyle, and the focus our focus is on uh, sustainable consumption patterns. Whether, how, and with what interventions can move us towards less materialistic lifestyles in an urban context. Um, and, and this was the way that we um, got to the sharing economy as the possibility of a business model which could uh, be material saving, uh, which could be energy saving, which could be waste saving, and which could promote uh, connections between people, engagement, empowerment, uh, community, uh, those were the things we were looking for and why uh, we, we got into that line. We um, had a, a first stage of experts in social and behavioral sciences who were defining the issues that we wanted to look at. And then um, uh, what is particular of interest to you, I think, is after the first stage when we tried to define what were the interests and what were the issues we were looking at, uh, we um, uh, carried out five concrete pilot studies in, uh, or we called them urban labs. Uh, we had two in Holon, two in Ashdod, and one in Jerusalem, and they all involved some form of sharing in a community context. Um, so one project was between parents concerning share of toys and share of rides to extracurricular activities, to chugim, between parents. Uh, another was sharing between entrepreneurs in a failing local commercial center. And it was in uh, we looked at co-workers, between co-workers concerning journey to work. That was in Ashdod. Uh, we looked at between residents concerning waste separation and sharing uh, uh, are willing uh, to do something jointly. That was Ashdod. And we looked at the relationship between residents and community centers. So those are the um, urban labs. They're completed. And uh, we bring to you a little bit of our uh, results. So do you want me to answer questions, or should we go on to some? I think first of all, if anyone in the audience for any one of our speakers have any question, you're more than welcome to, to raise them. Um, I think we're very interested to see uh, how you approach trust in, in, the, in the projects that you've done. Uh, OK, so I can have another minute or two. OK. Um, yeah, trust was very central. It kept coming up all the time. Uh, everywhere in all of the projects, trust between people, trust was important. Um, so your, your question uh, that you sent me was uh, how do you create trust or how do you overcome uh, the barriers or the lack of trust? Um, so uh, we had um, uh, two experiences of dealing with trust. Uh, one between the entrepreneurs in the commercial center, uh, they did not have trust between each other. 
we were trying to get them to join together to uh, empower and improve the local economy by doing a sharing of interests together. They had a fear of competition between them. There was no way that you could easily get them to do something jointly. We realized it required uh, a very deliberate intervention and was not going to be easy. Somebody had to lead it. They had a mistrust in the local authority, so it wasn't a question that the local authority could lead it, but they did trust the community center, um, which is kind of a halfway house. Um, the community center um, was, uh, and, they, and the head of the community center was regarded as trustable and a leader, a midway leader, or a, a, a mediator, or, or some kind of position that they could gather around, and they said, yes, they're willing to trust her, a uh, very fine lady called Michal in, in Poland, and she is sitting them together. She took it on from us, because we, we said, that's, you know, we finished, we just did a pilot. She said, oh no, it's not going to stop there. And she's taken it on, and she's sitting with them every month and putting together a code of conduct. But they wouldn't have got together by themselves. It needed somebody as an agent, as a mediator, to bring them together. Um, the second uh, experience, group of experiences, thank you, um, talked about trust from a fear, a lack of trust. Um, fear um, that they were perhaps not going to take something from somebody they didn't know. Maybe it wasn't safe, maybe it wasn't quality, maybe they didn't know. And they weren't necessarily going to send their children um, with somebody they didn't know. Um, because how were they going to trust the driver and put them in the car and, um, and to go to the hooking, to go to the extracurricular activities? And, and they expressed actually um, fears. But they weren't deep fears. Um, I, shall I quote to you? A mother said um, she actually wasn't thinking about sharing toys. No, she refused. And then she said, no, but I agree, actually. I did take from family. I even took from an unfamiliar neighbor. I, um, maybe I will. But they wanted some form of familiarity, some form of connection. The same thing about drivers. So they're not sure that they're willing to We said, well, you trust the driver who takes them in the shuttle. And that's a complete stranger. Uh, and, and why don't you trust just another parent, just like yourself? So then they said, maybe they would if they knew who they were. So there is a fear, there is a barrier, but it's not a big one. There are ways which the community can en enhance familiarity, and you could get over that barrier pretty easily. Continue the momentum of Offline world, that you do, do you have some experiences from the shootout that you can share with the audience? Uh, things that happen in the corporate world. Uh, the shootout, I think, is the most important thing in the world. It's a very important thing in the world. It's a very important thing in the world. It's a very important thing in the world. לפחות הגדולים לא מתנהלים על ידי זה שכל החברים שותפים בתפעול של החנות. אנחנו החלטנו, גם כשהיינו 100 חברים, עכשיו שאנחנו כבר 300 מגדלים, כל חודש בעוד 15, שכל החברים צריכים להיות שותפים בניהול של החנות. כלומר, כל אחד צריך לתת שלוש שעות בחודש תורנות ולעבוד בחנות, אז יוצא שבן אדם ש... עכשיו יצטרף, חודש הבא הוא כבר יהיה, יישב על הקופה במשך שלוש שעות. עכשיו, יש פה דילמה, האם אנחנו צריכים, הבן אדם יושב על הקופה, הקופה יש כמה אלפי שקלים, זה דילמה של אימון, אנחנו החלטנו שאנחנו נותנים את האימון הזה מיד, ואין איזה זמן הכשרה או משהו כזה, ואחת הסיבות, א', שאתה נותן למישהו אימון והוא יודע שהאחריות עליו, יש לו עוד כמה אנשים, אבל הוא מרגיש שזה אווירה, דיברת פה על פיל. אווירה שיש אמון, אז, אז הרבה פעמים זה עובד, ואין לנו, אנחנו כבר שלוש שנים פועלים, שלוש וחצי שנים, לא היה לנו גנבות, לא שום דבר, ויש המון המון זרים, 
ואנחנו לא מכירים את רוב האנשים, אני לא מכיר כבר יותר מחצי מהאנשים, אז זה דילמה או, או עניין אחד, כמה אתה נותן לבן אדם תחושה שהוא חלק מזה. אני חושב שהסיפור של להיות מאחורי הקופה, בתור משתתף, קוראים לך להרגיש שזה שלך, כי בא מישהו אחר, אתה צריך להגיד לו עכשיו, לתת לו תשובות. ברגע שאתה העברת אותו לצד השני, הוא פתאום נהיה הבעלים, ואפילו כשהוא צריך לפני חודש, פתאום צריך לתת תשובות, אז הוא מרגיש ישר בעלות, והוא גם, זה יותר מהצד של האמינות, הוא מרגיש שהוא חייב להתנהג בצורה אמינה כדי שלא כל השאר ככה נתנו לו את האחריות. אז זו שיטה אחת, והשיטה השנייה שלנו באמת להתגבר על הצורך בלהיות, להכיר אנשים, אנחנו עושים המון המון אירועים חברתיים. יש מסיבות, כל יום שישי יש מכירת חומוס ובירות, ויושבים ומכירים אחד שני, יש חטאות משותפות, יש המון המון שיתוף של מידע בפורומים ודילמות בפורומים באינטרנט, וככה אנשים מכירים ו... חולקים דעות, זה השיטות המרגליות שאנחנו פועלים. Uh, I wanted to ask something about uh, a breach of confidence. Uh, tell us about a specific uh, person that considered the system trustworthy and then had, uh, like you said, Gary, an unfortunate experience and said, uh, I, I thought you were trustworthy and you are no longer trustworthy. And, and you weren't able to remedy that. that that's the question. I'm interested in, in like a, a total catastrophe. <laughs> I'm not sure I can satisfy your, uh, your desires. Uh, just kind of, you know. But um, we have a lot of cases in which um, buyers or sellers, let's take a case of a buyer, working, a top buyer, working with a seller and uh, ask for, um, uh, I don't know, a, a logo. And uh, he, He, uh, he provides the requirements of working with the seller, first iteration, second iteration, third iteration, and he lose, loses his patience because he's not getting what he wants. This guy loses trust in the seller and maybe in, you know, in the platform itself. And in this case, what we do, we actually work within support, trying to locate those kind of foul conversations in time in order to make sure that we salvage the, the buyer providing with uh, an alternative, maybe different seller, maybe in some cases we found both sides. So, so they, they will feel, be okay, feel okay to, to go somewhere else and, uh, and, and continue work on, on the platform. This is a uh, kind of, uh, maybe you have uh, other examples, my dear friend? Yeah, I don't have concrete examples of Uh, when, when the shit hit the fan and nothing could have been made. Uh, but I think, I think the, the important thing about trust is not only that you, you create the, the trust system, okay, so the reputation system, or that you manage your, uh, your platform in the way to minimize those things. I think that maybe the more important thing is what, what the guy is talking about, is really what happens in this case where, I don't know, Maybe trust-wise, everything's okay. It's just like the buyer doesn't like the seller or the seller doesn't like the buyer. And then you get like these behaviors when they lose trust. By the way, there are people that are more trustful and there are people that are always in fear. I mean, it's also, it's not objective, right? Trust. I mean, there are people that always feel that the cleaning lady is stealing things from them and they switch like a hundred cleaning lady, right? I mean, it's a matter of, sometimes it's a matter of of the nature of a person. So the important thing about trust is not to have like an objectively perfect world because it doesn't exist. Uh, the important thing is to deal with it and to manage it and to really allow those things to resolve in a, in a good uh, uh, matter. And, and I think this is, maybe it's, it's more important than building the system itself, is, is really building the, the methodologies in which the system behaves one thing, once things go uh, into this uh, zone. I want to add to that one more thing. You know, in conflicts, people tend to make assumptions. And for most part, uh, bad assumptions. And, and this is the, the place for 
the platform safety net to kick in and solve the problem. This is what we're trying to do. Move them from the assumptions, keep it aside, and provide a solution at that moment. Let them go to the next uh, adventure within the, the platform. something that is uh, for designers and videos and everything. But for me as a professional person, I think that I feel that uh, my uh, way to, um, to sell myself, um, like I want to do logos, I, I don't feel like a logo is worth $5. So the thing is that I feel, as a person from outside, um, why someone will pay me 300 shekels or anything else if they can find in fiber in $5? This is my question. That's a question. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you... You have a point. I mean, and there are many, many types of logos, and there are many, many types of professionals. Um, and I don't think that if someone is looking for a five thousand dollars logo, and he's, he likes the process of thinking about the concept, and then doing iterations, and speaking about values, and you know, like doing the like the complete logo creation flow. Maybe Fiverr is not the right place for him. I mean, may maybe it's a place for a person that has different needs. Um, so that that's one thing, and and I think it's okay. I don't think one thing comes. At, and and it's the same for you as a designer. I mean, if you're a designer that feels very uh, that that's very attached to this process, to this designing process of being super creative and and having to do research for what you do and feeling 100% with everything you deliver. And so maybe Fiverr is not the right place for you. Um, it's, it's just a different product. It's a different value proposition for both buyers and sellers. Um, it's the same of owning a falafel uh, shop or having a, a gourmet restaurant. Like It's, it's okay to have both. Um, on one hand. On the other hand, Fiverr is in the progress of introducing new pricing models. Um, and we've actually, in the last few months, did many types of tests with new pricing models. And in some categories today, Fiverr, you can find services that start way above $5. When I say way, I mean like $50, $100, $150. Uh, and we're, we're opening the marketplace um, for these markets as well, because we, we, we actually, we know that these are additional markets. It's not like changing our own market, but that there are additional markets um, that we can, we can spread into. So you might find out that as a designer, you do have place on Fiverr, um, and that the platform supports your, your requirements as well. Go online, don't give up. Uh, going back to trust, uh, a question for uh, Valerie. Um, can local authorities help in building uh, uh, a climate for trust? We, we talked before about this lady in, in Hulon, but maybe the municipality of Hulon should, should have a role in that kind of stuff. No two local authorities are exactly the same, so let's not put them in a, a, a model that's only one, uh, one type. But, um, but what local authorities need to do on the whole from what we've found is they need to uh, be more open, more transparent, uh, and make um, uh, data available and um, 
to go uh, to do outreach, not just to wait until um, there is something um, a connection that, that they need. They, they actually have to take a positive step and build a relationship of trust between themselves, going out to the residents or going out um, to to the entrepreneurs or going out to any group and to to build that CU as you know the, the diplomats use CBMs confidence building measures but we have to build it up over time. I would also incidentally say there's no hope when it crashes. You should have built your confidence and your trust beforehand. If you got to a level of no trust and it crashes, you're in deep trouble. That's everywhere for everything. But if you went on outreach beforehand and you built the level of confidence beforehand, then you ought to be able to build a relationship that even when you make a mistake, you can find a, a way where it doesn't crash the whole uh, the whole trust process. Then hold that for me a minute. No, there is something else I also want to add about local authorities. I think local authorities could do a lot. Uh, and, and local, authority, local authorities could build a climate that the sharing economy could find a flourish in it. Um, because if they build um, the, 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 the neighborhood is a community, if they build uh, networks and relationships between the residents, if they build uh, a willingness um, to share something, let's say we started with something that's community sharing, it, the, the, the research indicates that if somebody starts, moves, does something at one place in the sharing economy, uh, they will move on to others. So it could be that one could start with something in the sharing economy at the level of community sharing, tool libraries, uh, sharing uh, uh, in some way at, at, the, at the community level, and building a willingness at the community level, and then maybe it will widen, and uh, local authorities could be could 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 go more transparent, they could encourage something. Now, there is another model which is very interesting, which is the model of see all. I don't know if any of you have ever thought of looking at see all of all places, but see all brands itself as a sharing city, see all. Um, and they have actually built the platforms themselves. They build and operate the platforms, they haven't waited for you guys to come in, they build the platforms themselves as a local authority in order to enable the residents to share. Their main uh, motivation was actually not environmental, it was social, they wanted to promote more engagement and community and social connections uh, between, between the population, but they built the platforms themselves and they operate them uh, in their own way. Um, so uh, yes, we, we, I strongly believe that the local authorities can encourage it, can provide a climate that would generate it, and they may even be the operators or they may be uh, partners in the operation, Airbnb and Amsterdam partner in, in some way. <laughs> Anyone in the crowd? Yes. Hi, Shalom. We are Mishak Harzir, and I am a member of the Estadio Shedon. We are doing it too, but it's an application for a few. I was very excited with what you said. כי פתאום כשאני יוצא לי למכור ניתוק ולא לבוא במחירים גבוהים מאוד, אז בהתחלה אני גם מאוד נבהלתי מהתופעה הזאת שנקראת פייבר, אבל אני הבנתי שדווקא, אני, אני מצאתי שאני יכול, יש תחומים שאני פחות טוב בהם, למשל איור, או אם אני צריך מישהו שזה כמו גרפיטי או דברים כאלה, אז אני יכול בפייבר לזכור בעצם קבלני משנה במחירים מאוד טובים. ואם מפקחים עליהם נכון, אפשר להגיע לתוצאות טובות. זה השימוש שאני מצאתי, אבל זה באמת יצר באמת חוקים חדשים בשוק. אני רוצה להפנות שאלה גם אליכם וגם אליך, בקשר לווידאו, 
מה דעתכם על איך אתם רואים, האם וידאו יכול להשתלב בתור פייבר? גם מבחינת הפרסונה שמציגים, האם זה יכול להיות לטובה או לרעה? ורציתי לשאול אותך בקשר לחנות, לקופה, האם הקופה מצולמת בווידאו בזמן שהחבר חדש... תודה. Maybe add to that, like how video, from your experience, how video can enhance trust in the platform. So actually video um, is something that we discovered a long, long time ago, is that when a seller puts a video of himself talking and explaining the service on the, what we call a gig, a service on Fiverr called a gig, so on the gig page, right, on the product page, when they're describing their service in video, um, it actually generates uh, a lot more business, um, which is a result of a, of a higher trust. So when you're, when you're seeing, I don't know if you're, when you asked about uh, adding videos, this is what you meant. Uh, but yeah, uh, many of our, of our gigs, um, it's less common in, in the, um, illustrations and caricatures and these kinds of categories. Um, but programming attack, for example, uh, advertising, uh, or online marketing, um, we have quite a lot of sellers that are choosing video to present themselves, just talking and explaining the service. Um, first of all, it's, it creates better understanding of the service because buyers don't like reading the description. So when the seller is talking and explaining these things, we have better understanding of the service, which results in better, higher satisfaction. But also, of course, getting to see the person, feeling that it's a real person that's talking to me, um, seeing if what, what I feel for this person uh, actually generates um, a much, much better uh, conversion for, the, for these uh, gigs. Just to add one, one more thing, uh, as Shai mentioned, video is a driver. This is a very powerful driver for us. Uh, in order to make sure that the content within these videos is, is, uh, you know, is okay, uh, we actually review each and every one of them. So the level of trust here is very, very high. We are not letting uh, bad content in a video form get into the market. אנחנו לא מצלם מצלמה מעל הקופה בכוונה, חשבנו על זה, אבל אנחנו חושבים שאם נפקח על אנשים, אז תהיה נבואה שמגשימה את עצמם, ירגישו שהם יכולים, זה משהו שמצופה מהם, ואנחנו מצפים ממשהו הפוך, וזה מייצר עבירה אחרת לגמרי, ואין לנו שום, אנחנו לא, אנחנו משתדלים לא לפקח פיקוח הדוק. אלא לתת לאנשים את האמון ולתת להם את המסגרת ותחושה ש... שזה חשוב מה שהם עושים. So, like, like I said, we actually monitor the content getting into the... Everyone, no, not manually. And I'm not getting into details because this is our secret sauce. So forget about it. But in general, we review each and every gig getting into our system from different or various angles. Video, image, others. Um, 
some manually, some automatically, in order to make sure that the content is good enough and not you know, against our term of service and other things that might, might uh, hurt our, our uses. Now, uh, for uh, installations or let uh, deliveries, I'll let Shai. Okay, so, uh, so in terms of, of uh, how do we, uh, I'll start with the second question, because that's uh, the easier one. Uh, one. How, how do we know if the quality was good or not? Um, so the easiest way is to measure satisfaction, and the way you measure satisfaction is first by rating. So, and it's not only by whether the rating was five star or four stars or three stars. I mean, this also, but it's also, um, and this is something I started saying before, that rating systems are too powerful. Um, and and they, they drag all sorts of psychological behaviors. For instance, people are not feeling comfortable of rating something which is less than five stars, okay? So if I'm happy, I'll rate five stars. If I'm not happy, I won't rate anything. If I'm pissed off, I'll rate one star, okay? Um, so it's not only looking at the average rating, it's also looking at the percentage of orders that got rated at all. It's also looking at retention. I mean, if a buyer bought something on Fiverr and was happy, he will go back and buy again something else, or he will go back and buy again the same thing. So these are all indicators of satisfaction, of satisfaction which are very important, and these are just some of the, of the factors that we're looking into. Uh, another thing is that we have the editorial team, which is also a team that's, been, that, that's managed by Guy, and they're actually going over the deliveries, some of the deliveries, and we are looking into what the sellers are selling. Okay, so it's not only to see how the gig is looking, it's also to look at real orders, and we have some ways uh, in which we go over a uh, large amount of deliveries and, and, and just kind of like seeing what's, what's the level of, of quality there. Um, and regarding your uh, first question about, um, what was it about? <laughs> The late delivery, the, the delivery time. So this one's pretty easy, actually. So uh, a seller declares what's the delivery time that he's obligated to. Uh, they can say whatever they want. Some of them, which are very popular and busy, they deliver in two weeks, three weeks. Some of them deliver in 24 hours. And we actually, uh, a seller on Fiverr, once the order starts, he has a very big uh, uh, counter that's counting back. And when the delivery is late, uh, we know that it's late, and we we monitor it and we remember it, and uh, they pay for it. Big time. <laughs> Can I just add a word on trust profiles? And trust profiles are in every platform has its own, and one of the problems that is coming up again and again when we look across the board a community sharing or uh, a community who is interested in sharing is how can a person uh, have their own personal trust profile um, uh, where privacy of course is involved but if you if a, a local entrepreneur uh, wants to try to build up a business um, he, he needs access to data about um, uh, the trust profiles of the buyers and sellers, in, and he, he can't get that data, that's big data that, that's in your um, big platforms. Um, the UK has been looking at that, and uh, one of the things that they have proposed is, uh, it, it isn't in operation, but they've come up with some research of a CEHAP, a C -E -H -A -U, something like that, uh, saying we ought to have a uh, a local government or public operated system which can agglomerate your trust profile, and if you wanted it to be there, agglomerate the trust profiles of um, the buyers, the sellers, and the prosumers, and the consumers, so, so that it's accessible data for <coughs> micro entrepreneurs to be able to get going with, with their own uh, business. That's important to them. Yeah, it's in some in some ways, it, it, I think it does exist, in, in, and it's being used in some. I mean, 
we are using, for example, uh, LinkedIn Connect and Facebook Connect, so we are using these things. Um, but I think this is something that, that's very, very interesting. And, and I imagine, I think that in some countries also, there are, I mean, I, I know that I have lived in Germany for a few months, and I, I know that if you were late paying your internet bill, you can't get uh, cable, uh, the cables installed in your house. So they, they do have some kind of blacklisting and like mutual uh, profiling. Um, I hope it, it won't get there, but um, but it might. I think it's I tend to agree. Even uh, I'm, you know, I can say that even within the platform, if someone provides good service, I have good reputation in one category. It doesn't have to say that it is better or good or the same in others. So we need again to find the right balance. I'm. I think that uh, having a global uh, profile is, is problematic. I know that there were attempts doing that in the past that haven't prevailed, but uh, who knows? Yeah. Okay, I think the clear conclusion is that we have a lot of other questions we need to ask and we can discuss trust in uh, many other occasions. I think for now we just leave it uh, for you guys to come and ask uh, Formally afterwards, I would like to mention that uh, we would appreciate if you sign up in our forms for WeShare and you can join our Facebook group. I would like to give uh, a deep thank you for all of you to come here uh, and share with us. The